All right, so here we see the three key characteristics of monopolistic competition. Uh, we see some similarities to perfect competition. Uh, number of firms, many. Ease of entry, high. Those two are exactly the same as perfect competition. And the fact that there's a lot of firms, what we're trying to say is that um, each firm's output is a tiny percentage of the market output. Now, it's not going to make them a price taker, as we will see, but it does mean that they don't really have to think strategically about each other. In oligopoly, the final market structure we will get to later on, um, each firm has a fairly significant percentage of the output. And when one makes a decision to raise a price, cut a price, it actually affects the the profit maximization calculations of the other firms. And so that's what we mean by strategic. They, they, they have to take in account, if I do this, they might do this, and then I should do this, and blah, 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 blah. So the significance of there being a lot of firms is you don't have to worry about any of that. You can, you can take everybody's behavior kind of as given because your decision to increase or decrease your output is not enough to move the market. And that's the significance here. The ease of entry high is going to be um, the same sort of significance we saw before with perfect competition, which is if you're making a profit, there's really nothing to stop other people coming in and, and kind of running that to zero. So even though there are actions available in monopolistic competition to try and hold on to your profit, the truth is in the long run, that's the tendency is to go to zero. So what are these things you could do in monopolistic competition to try and maintain your profit that's not available in perfect competition? And it has to do, in a sense, with the name. We talk about monopolistic competition. There is the competition where there's a lot of firms and it's easy for them to enter, but there's a monopolistic quality to this type of market structure, and it has to do with this last um, characteristic, the type of product. You, in a sense, in monopolistic competition, have a little bitty monopoly over your product because the consumers see it as different from that of the other competitors. If we remember in perfect competition, we uh, saw from the firm's point of view that if they were to raise their price, they would sell nothing. This was the market price. And they, had, they could sell as much as they wanted at that price, but as soon as they raised their price, their quantity fell to zero. And that's because the, the consumers saw their product as identical. I would not pay more than this for something I see as identical. But what if I see it as different somehow? What if I see it as differentiated? Um, so even though this is the only characteristic that differs for monopolistic competition from perfect competition, it will make all the difference. It means that now when a perfect, uh, excuse me, a monopolistic competitor decides to raise its price, and we're going to again look at the firm demand, just like we did over here, uh, we do not see the same picture. We are going to see something we, we kind of learn how to work with under monopoly, which is the firm demand curve is now downward sloping. Now, the firm demand for monopolistic competition, well, you really can't read this, can you? That's monopolistic competition firm, firm uh, is not the same thing as the market demand. Remember in monopoly, the demand curve for the market, the demand curve for the firm is the same thing, and that's not the case here. Each firm in the monopolistic competitive industry has its own demand curve, um, but it's what's significant is all because of the, this one change now they can actually increase their price and not lose all their output. So I can raise my price and still sell some. And so this is the big difference here. All right, so now we want to talk about profit maximization for monopolistic competition. Um, we just talked about the three key characteristics mean that the firm demand curve is downward sloping and just like we learned in Monopoly, when you, when you have a downward sloping demand, if you, you can cut the price and sell more, cut the price, sell more, cut the price, sell more, but when you do that, you lose dollars. You would have sold at a, these units here at a higher price. You lose money on that in order to gain the money by selling the extra unit. And all of that was the short way, or excuse me, the long way of saying that 
marginal revenue does lie below demand. So at this point, if you were given this as a picture, you really don't know if you're not told, is this a monopoly or is this a monopolistic com competition firm? Um, so graphically, it's very similar, um, which is kind of a good thing. Um, but you just need to know what we are dealing with here. We are dealing with monopolist competition, and this is what the firm is looking at. So how does it decide what to do? Well, I think we're kind of getting a little familiar with this. We start with profit maximization or loss minimization if things aren't going well, and that is MR equals MC, and that determines your best you can do, Q star. You've got to find the price at Q star, price at Q star, and we look to the demand curve and find our P star. That's the best our firm can do. Um, are they making a profit or not? Which curve is missing <laughs> that I would need to have if I was going to determine that? All right? We were, you, you know the price you're charging. You know the quantity you're going to make. How do I know if I'm making a profit? I have to know how much it costs me on average to make that particular unit. And so what I need, of course, is my average total cost curve. So let's say it looked something like that. So if I take that as what's going on, then here's my price, and at the Q star, here's my, Q, uh, my average total cost. So this is a firm making a profit. So price is greater than average total cost at Q star means profit. All right, now that was pretty much the end of the story with monopolist. What's going to be different here in monopolist competition is ease of entry is high. So the fact that this profit is going on will tell other um, firms who aren't in this that they can enter and get some of those profits. Before I get into what will happen in the long run in this industry, let's go ahead and take a look at loss um, minimization because that is a, a possibility for a monopolistic competitor. <clears throat> okay, so before watching any further, you may even want to pause the video and see if you can figure out where you think this particular uh, firm would be producing, what quantity they produce, what price they're going to charge, are they making a profit, or are they making a loss? Because that's all we want to do right now is just kind of take a look at that sort of stuff. All right, so let's see here. Step one, MR equals MC. Boom. There's your Q star. Step two, what is the price I'm going to charge? Take it up to the demand curve. There's your P star. Step three, am I making a profit or a loss? Take my Q star all the way up to my average total cost, not my average variable cost, my average total cost. There is how much on average Q star costs me, but here's the price I'm actually collecting, so it's costing me more on average than I am actually earning. So then we have ourselves a loss right there, that rectangular green thing there. Should they keep producing? It's similar to what we saw before in perfect competition. Um, this, is, uh, this is the Q star. There's your average variable cost. So on average, they, it costs them this. So they're losing this much in, um, well, in loss for each unit that they produce, but it's still more than it is average variable cost. So they are covering some of their fixed costs. So in the short run, it makes sense to keep producing. Um, in the long run, they would have to start considering exiting the industry. Um, so that part is how you would show loss minimization with monopolist competition. Now we want to look at what happens to this industry in the long run. Particularly, let's go back to um, a monopolist comp competition firm that is actually making a profit. Uh, as we've said, the ease of entry is high. So what will happen in the long run for that firm? Okay, get ready for this one to get a little messy. <laughs> what we want to show is the long run position for a monopolistic competitive firm. Because one of the things we want to argue is that the tendency in the market, since the ease of entry is high, is for profits to go to zero. So we're starting at a short run picture here of a firm making a profit. So we have our... MR equals MC um, here, and so we can take this up, let me not draw on this any more than I have to, we can take this up to the demand curve, so here's my Q star, here's my P star, 
and my P star at or, and my Q star average total cost is here. So my price is greater than my average total cost. I am making a profit. Now what's going to happen in the long run is other firms will see this and they think, oh, I don't want to get into that. Think about the coffee houses, um, if you're old enough to. <laughs> there was a time, there was before Starbucks, certainly in this part of the country, and, well, the non-Seattle part of the country, and, um, and there really weren't very many coffee houses. I mean, you got coffee at restaurants, but you didn't just go to a place dedicated to coffee. Um, then Starbucks comes in, they prove it's a very profitable thing, and all of a sudden they're popping up everywhere. That's the sort of mechanism we're talking about. Once this um, market is seen as being very profitable, everybody wants to get into it. So now, follow along here. Two things are going to happen. Well, one thing's going to happen, and what it's going to do to the curve is something else. Um, what's going to happen is there is some overall market. Remember, we're looking at a firm here. And, and when Starbucks came in, they showed us that there was a demand, a market demand for coffee house places. And so more firms came in um, and took that demand and divided it up amongst themselves. Okay. So there's only so much market out there. And so what's going to happen is this demand curve, as it gets, as more and more people come in, the demand for your firm is going to to shrink a little. You're going to lose some of what's available there because you're sharing it with all these other people that are coming in. Okay. The other thing that's happening is if we think back to elasticity, the more options a consumer has, the more sensitive they are to your price changes. So whatever this elasticity is, whatever it is originally, as um, firms come in, uh, it's going to get more elastic. It's going to get more flatter compared to this one. It's going to show that for any price change you have, you're going to have a bigger reaction in quantity demanded because they have so many more options. So here's what happens. In the very long run, you would expect the demand curve to shift to the left, so it's a decrease, this is your firm demand curve, and to also get to the point where profit is zero. Where is profit zero? When profit equals total cost, profit, when price equals average total cost, profit is zero. Um, so that would happen if this demand curve would shift to the left so much that it was just tangent to the average total cost curve. Why is that significant? Because the price, the price is coming from the demand curve, and you need price to equal average total cost. So you need the, uh, the demand curve to just touch the average total cost curve and also reflect um, the greater sensitivity consumers have. So it would look something like this. I might be exaggerating a little bit. Uh, so we'll call that demand long run. And then the other thing, of course, that's going to happen is there'll be a new marginal revenue. Um, we'll call that long run as well. Um, so marginal revenue equals marginal cost will still determine, it's just that we're on a new one now, will determine the profit maximizing quantity. We'll bring that up and it should line up to this point here where the demand curve now is just tangent to the average total cost. And so you'll end up in a situation where your Q star gives you your P star, your Q star gives us the same amount for average total cost, profit is zero, and that's what's going to happen. So um, to put it in English, <laughs> uh, in the long run, a profit, um, a, a monopoly competitive industry that's making a profit attracts more companies to enter. It divides up the demand that is available for this firm. It takes some of it away, and it flattens or makes it more elastic as a result. And so the tendency then is to go to this zero profit. What is the thing that the monopolist competitive firm do to prevent this? Is to try in the minds of the consumers to prevent as much of this as possible, to make you feel like... Um, there's something special about this coffee house that I, I am willing to pay more for them. The more differentiated their product actually is, or just as good, actually perceived to be in the mind of the consumers, the more likely they are to maintain 
some positive profit, you know, prevent the full dis decline in the demand and maintain some profit. And that is where we get a lot of our most intensive advertising effort, effort in, um, in the market is to try and maintain the monopolistic part of the monopolistic competition.